portion of the Plainfield Community Center and Gallery uh, 50th anniversary celebration and group art show event. And thank you for coming outside to um, join us for a moment. And thanks, and I want to thank Jason Mallory. I'm lighting him and his fabulousness, who will be playing later <laughs> tonight. And Inside Umlaut has started. So feel free to take a moment with us and then head up the stairs. And I'll be showing some of the works of these artists that are outside on this building. This is a, this is a Matthew Denton. This is Owen. Uh, Peter Schumann, uh, Denton. This is a, probably the dollar store. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Bread Not Bombs, Peter Schumann. Again, this is an anti-Gaza atrocity um, skeleton. And we go back towards the graveyard back here. And there are more of these Gaza protest banners that continue to go back into the woods. So uh, anyway, we welcome you here. Thank you. Sometimes I lay under the moon and thank God I'm breathing. And I pray, don't take me soon. Cause I'm here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown. But I never let it get me down. For when negativity surrounds, I know one day it will all turn around. All my life I've been waiting for, praying for people to say that they don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war, and our children will play one day. against industrial food and the retail capitalization of nutrition. A group of people, a handful of people stood up and said, no, we're going to order our own organic foods wholesale and divide them up and make our own store like that. It's going to be a <laughs> buying club. Yeah. <laughs> that was 50 years ago and I was six years old. And my folks were part of that little circle. And I'm proud to be part of that circle now in this part of this world. A special place here in Plainfield, Vermont, USA. And I still believe in a world without war, and I hope you can all share that dream with me. And in our protest, our protest will be our peaceful nature and our following of a path of real nutrition and real health and real good medicine in this world, in this place, today and now, with all of us here together. So let's say, sometimes I lay under the moon, and thank God I'm breathing, and I pray, don't take me soon, cause we're here for a reason, sometimes in our tears we drown, but we're never gonna let it get us down. same sun singing songs of freedom like why oh 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 why o
down Cause with negativity surround We know one day it will all turn around Thank you in a long time. <laughs> you must be a clown, right? No. Thanks for introducing us. Turn it up, baby. Duncan. Turn it up. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll see you tonight. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, shucks, I forgot.
you want to make a little introduction to what this what this thing is? Yeah, because you have a dual member, but I where did you find it? In the Contestoria um, ah. archives. So Alexis just found this Contestoria in the in the pile of Contestorias which we have in the red chat. <laughs> And she found it. I have no memory of making it, but it's Gaza, it's, it's Joshua, it's the destruction of Jericho to the, with the order by the God of the time that is not only people have to be destroyed, every sheep, cat, mouse, everybody has to be killed. Netanyahu used this as an example of what he is out to do. That story in the Bible. My daughter Maria just did a Day of the Dead celebration in Glover at nighttime. Pretty wonderful event. Going into the pine forest where many of our friends are memorialized or buried. Uh, the ashes are there and so on. And this Day of the Dead includes us. in favor of death. The question of what is war? Prophets who dies does not merely address politics, but the politically controlled population as well. He he And points to the grim death facts of civilization at its best. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah,
Individual death embedded in traditional empathy succumb to the vast statistics of meaningless anonymous death as reflected in the latest monthly review revelation that the actual U.S. military spending is hidden from public view and is more than twice the acknowledged level, reaching 1.5 trillion in 2022, which are now actively engaged in financing the latest horrendous genocide. In whose interest population the democratically elected now openly fascist government how will we face Amicably or falsely as victims of empire politics. And yet, all of us practitioners of life, therefore, lucky possessors of even the smallest amounts of habitual or extra habitual happinesses, yes, that includes you guys. must be obliged by that sensation. Must parade it in the street. Yes, out in the street and over here. <laughs> he knows how to do it. Must toss it at the accumulated evil of the whole. With the logic of possible happiness solutions. Oh yeah, 
Consequences of our original birthright, our normal everyday euphoria to train the untrained soul, to sharpen the oppressed mind and to fight the genociders. <laughs> so therefore we must now proceed with euphoria exercises. <laughs> exercise number one, Zuto, Puto, Puto. <laughs> Ex uh, exercise number two. <laughs> Exercise three is beep, 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 beep. straight into the brains and deal them little do, do, do. And the others you all know you can learn them from them, they know exactly. <laughs> and a <of> fiddle term. <laughs> There will be a rehearsal oh, yes. open to the volunteers yeah. at 2, and a mass, an emergency mass at 3. Uh, it's called a no water freedom, no food democracy emergency mass. And we have accept as many people who want to participate in it as want to come. Rehearsals at two, and the mass is at four and starts in the cold cathedral with cold guards. Yeah, they are cold. cold. Wear your coats. <laughs> yeah, and then it proceeds from there into the ballroom, which will be heated, and hopefully ends up at the bonfire outside. Outside. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, Red and Puppet in Glover. Yeah. So thank you, Peter Schumann. Yeah. So, there's, please enjoy Brett and Aioli uh, over here at um, by the skeleton, and we have an amazing lineup that will continue through the evening of artists and performers. And I just wanted to acknowledge the artists who are here right now. Nicholas had his work here. And, um, uh, e Rock is here. Matthew Denton, Ellis Jacobson is here tonight. Um, Golden True is here. Uh, Jerome Lepani, Helen Rabin, her husband Jules is here. Uh, Susan Grimaldi, and um, the list goes on. I'll, I'll spend more time, but we are honoring Randy Keeney's work in the back. And next, I'd like to introduce to you Avram Pat. Um, very happy to have him here. I did. I said I did. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. I uh, hope you can hear me. Um, uh, I was asked, this room is a very special room for me. Uh, and I, I created plays in this, in this room that we performed here, took to New York and elsewhere. And I was asked if we could recreate some of those plays, and I, I could not do that. So I'll just tell you a brief little story. And it is really an honor uh, to be uh, following Brett and Puppet and Peter because of the connection to that. So 
But first, I want to tell you that in the, sometime in the 1970s, I can't tell you exactly what year, we used to have a weekly spaghetti dinner in this room here, spaghetti with pesto. Um, and there would be some entertainment. And a lot of that entertainment. Oh. Yeah. How's that? Recorded better. Okay. No, it's not good. Uh, okay. A lot of that entertainment was organized by Barney Carlson, and Barney uh, created what is we would now call on television fake news shows, satirical co comedy news shows. There was no such thing at that time except here in this room. Uh, and I had the privilege of being a cast member of those fake news shows. Um, I uh, was a full of hot air commentator who commented on the news and used a lot of big words and talked and talked and in the end really said nothing at all. And so I just want to recreate that moment where I introduced myself. This is M. Charles Smarty Pants with Under the Overview. I don't remember what I said after that, but that's what we did. But mostly I want to talk about this room because uh, I know some. I know a lot of people in this room. A lot of people don't. But I arrived in Plainfield um, and lived here for over uh, 20 years. I arrived here in the winter of 1970 to make my parents happy by finishing college at Goddard. <laughs> that summer was the summer that Bread and Puppet Theater arrived in Vermont and spent the first few years in Vermont at Cape Farm, which was then Goddard College property. I was freaking out uh, as the weather started to get warm because I did not want to go back to the city uh, for the break between semesters. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to, uh, where I was going to stay. And then we didn't have internet then, but somebody put up flyers in all the dorms, and that somebody was Jules Rabin, who's here, who was on the faculty then. And it said that when Bread and Puppet came that, that summer, they were going to be looking for 10 student apprentices who would get room and board on the Northwood campus from Goddard. And the first thing I saw was room and board. Right. Room and board. Second thing was, well, I'd seen Bread and Puppet do some street shows. Uh, sounds like an interesting thing to do for a couple of months. So I did that for a couple of months, and then I was a full-time member of the company for about two, three more years, toured all over in Europe and stuff like that. And then in 1974, made my first show here as the Barking Rooster Theater. It was a show called Not Afraid of Falling, based on a very short story in Yiddish by the Yiddish, beloved Yiddish writer I.L. Peretz. And we built it here, performed it here. At the end of the days, two days of Bread and Puppet Circus shows uh, in, in July of 1974, that was the last time Bread and Puppet performed the circus in Plainfield before going to Glover. We did the shows in this room at 10.30 at night after the circus shows were over with bus transportation from Cape Farm. Um, and I'll just say that uh, the show had a number of uh, people with strong connections to Bread and Puppet Theater and a lot of people that didn't. And it was just an amazing event. And I'll just tell you one thing. The stage was here. The musicians sat over there. Um, and Not Afraid of Falling, it's about a, a rabbi in a little town of Nemirov in Poland, um, who uh, it is said by the, by the people who live there that he, he would not be around on the high holy days and on Yom Kippur, and how could the rabbi not be a, around? And, and, and it, what everyone said was, well, he goes to heaven on the high holy days. And there was one visitor in town a Litvak, a Lithuanian, and Litvaks among uh, Polish Jews had a reputation for being um, 
show me, prove it, I don't believe you, skeptics, not mystical, religious, spiritual people, show me. And he said, I don't, I don't believe that. And, and to, to prove it, he hid out in the rabbi's bedroom, and when the rabbi woke up, saw the rabbi put on the clothes of a um, peasant lumberjack and head out just as it was getting light with an ax in his belt, cut down a tree, chop it up, and take it into a house where there was a very old woman, sick and in bed, who could not get out of bed. And he knelt down and he built a fire uh, in her fireplace. And when she said, how can I pay you? He said, you don't have to pay me. And that's what uh, the rabbi of Nemirov did on the High Holy Days. And so after that, the Litvak, the cynic, whenever someone would say uh, that the rabbi goes to heaven on the High Holy Days, he would kind of nod his head and said, if not higher, or if nish noch hachau. And that's what, that's what our show is about. And to, to have show the rabbi going to heaven, the rabbi was played by Margot Sherman, uh, we had the stage set up here with kind of a, 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 a curtain up, up there, and in the curtain, uh, an, an, uh, there was a, a real a window with uh, sky blue and clouds behind it, and the rabbi climbed up a ladder. We put a ladder here, climbed up, opened the window, and looked out through the window uh, at the crowd, and that, that was uh, looking out. Uh, at, at heaven, and we called the show If Not Higher, because Margot said, um, uh, uh, we called the show Not Afraid of Falling, because Margot, the first time we rehearsed that, said that she was afraid she was going to fall when she climbed up the ladder. So that's my story. Uh, I haven't been in this room in a really long time, and it's, it's a very special thing to see all these people here, the artwork, uh, to see uh, uh, Peter and the Bread and Puppet folks, and thank you. Thank On you. with the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to also remember um, that Linda Elbow was a big part of the, yes. weather, the yeah. weather station. And can you give us that opening line again? Which opener? Your opener, your opening line. Your introduction. For the radio. Oh, for the radio, okay, yeah. for the, okay. Um, this is M. Charles Smarty Pants with Under the Overview. And Margot is still not afraid of falling. She's, she is still not afraid of okay, falling, okay. Margot. Okay. And she's working on a show by a Palestinian writer who yeah. was killed. And she's okay. trying to get it to the yeah. public. I got an email from Margot this morning saying, did I know that this was happening here today? And I, I said, yes, actually, um, I, I, I got asked to say something. So I did. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Avram. Great. So next up is Jason Mallory. And if you were here early, you saw his outdoor performance. And this is the warmer indoor version. So. Uh, I, uh, I grew up here. I grew up in Montpelier, and um, yeah, so I have a lot of memories uh, in this room. I know a lot of these people uh, from my own youth, and I just want to say it's, it's really powerful to be in the room with, with uh, Peter Schumann and with Jules Rabin, who uh, had a big influence on me uh, when I was just little. Um, my folks were a part of starting this co-op. My, my dad, John Mallory, taught design and construction at Goddard and built those wild, crazy buildings that were there. Um, and that, that's how uh, I landed here was when I was just small. And so uh, also when my kids were young, we are part of the co-op too. Um, and so it's just really nice to be here. I'm, I'm wearing my painter pants. Uh, as you know, I'm also working on the building. And thank you all for your roundup money, the roundup money. The, the, the building committee put in the three new windows here on the second floor. And uh, in spring, we'll be able to finish that front. And so there's enough money to finish it all up. Thank you so much. 
I did play a little bit outside, and that wreaked havoc with the tuning. I have an art I'm also an artist. I have a painting in the show. It's back there in the corner. It's up, up high. Yeah, it's a, a collage painting. So please uh, make sure to check that out. Um, my sweetheart Janice is here too. She's got artwork in the show. There's my sweetheart right there. Now it's hard as an artist sometimes, yeah, we always want to keep things up, but we all know that there's also things that make us feel down. And so art has to represent both sides of that. And uh, after Peter's um, poem, it made me feel very powerfully that it, it can't all be uh, bubbles, but we have to also also consider the anchors. So this is a song by Michael Franti. Tell me why grass was greener years ago. I swear it used to grow here. Why on this hill all the birds that used to come to fly here come to die here? Tell me why I need to know. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to know all you're showing me. Should I stick around for another day or two? Don't give up on me, I won't give up on you. Just believe in me like I believe in you. Tell me why, tell the diseases, tell me now. Show me now, won't you please? Tell me why there's child soldiers. Show me why they close the borders. Tell me now, I need to know. Sometimes I wish I didn't have to know. All oh, you're showing me. Hey, world, what you say? Should I stick around for another day or two? Thank you. When I was just a young boy, it feel 
like 17. I would talk to my father, told him about my dreams. And often he would tell me, don't rush to be a man. I heard the words that he spoke, but could not understand. Cause to me life was easy, it was just fun and games. Until I saw the people were filled with so much pain. It's harder to share sometimes, easier to pretend. The way we treat each other, I just can't comprehend. Last night I heard a story, too crazy to be true. I wouldn't dare repeat it, what are we gonna do? And as we figure it out, the time just slips away. Don't worry about tomorrow, just be glad you've got today. Strange, strange things are happening. Strange, strange, strange things are happening. Disappear, forget what you want. One disappear from it all. A strange is the thought. Boss, how your fears run so deep. All of my dreams, nightmares in my sleep. And I wake and I can't get my thoughts to align. Lost in my head and I'm searching for time. Try to figure how to escape from my mind. Strange up there, God knows I'm trying. Start feeling told, start feeling awake. Heavy as the head, now I know what it means. And I'm feeling the shame, feeling the doubt. Can't understand what this feeling about Till I reach an amount of the things that I need Allow me to be and myself to be free Oh, it's all too bizarre Can't get a grip All at the same time I think of a slip It's strange Strange things are happening Strange 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 things are happening Strange It's strange when we've got a food system destroying our health. We've got medical systems that make us sicker. You know it's strange. We've got an economic system keeping us down. You know it's strange. Strange, strange things are happening. Strange. Thank you.
so much. I'm going to play one more for you. All right, this is a song by, this is a song by Lena James. Catch me if I fall for you.
There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales. The northern lights have seen clear sights. There is the Was the night of the barge, Lake Lavarge I cremated Sam McGee. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows. Why, he left us home in the south of the road, we're on the pole. God only knows. He was always cold. And the gold seems to hold him like a spell. Look, he often say he's somewhere living here. <laughs> On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold, through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes be closed, then the lashes froze. Until sometimes, we couldn't see. <laughs> And it wasn't much fun. <laughs> but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed, and the stars overhead were dancing, heel and toe, he turned to me and said, Says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low, I couldn't say no. And he says, with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold, and it's got my hold till I'm chilled, clay through to the bone. Yet, taking the dead is my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. House and last need is a thing to heed. So I swore that I would not fail. We started on at the streak of dawn. God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh and he raved all day on his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, corpse was all that was left of Sarah. A breath in that land of death. As I hurried, hard driven, with the corpse at it, I could get rid because of what God was given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, You may tax your brawn and brains, but you promised true, and it's up to you to create those last remains. Well, Promise me. This is a down day. And the trail has its own stern code. And the dates to come. So I think it's still done. My heart. Oh, I curse the load. In the long, long night. At the lone other light. While the huskies round and ring. Howl up their woes to the homeless snows. Oh, God. How oh, I loathe the thing! And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And all I went, the dogs were spent, and the ground was getting 
Well, who the trail said is nice to have a man. I swore. <coughs> I often see that. <coughs> and I did a party with a grin. <laughs> <laughs> act to follow, as I might have guessed. But um, one of the many things that brings us here together tonight, uh, very connected to the anniversary of our amazing co-op, 50 years, um, most of it right in this building. Um, for 20 more or more of those years, huge part of the heart and soul of this co-op was a space filled by our friend Randy. Uh, I think most of you know Randy, knew Randy. Uh, for those of you who didn't, her paintings are along the back wall. Jerome's got a video. He's going to read some words of Randy's to us as soon as I'm finished, I think. Um, <clears throat> tried to get something to drink, but there was nothing left out there but oh. sugar water. <clears throat> um, Champagne? Sure. Okay. I'm going to read three short poems from Randy's partner, Len, who I imagine many of you also knew. <clears throat> and these are from Len's book, Farewell to Dundrennan, which is his town in Scotland. And none of these are directly about Randy, but you'll see they all have a pretty good connection. Um, and Len was an amazing poet from Scotland who, he and Randy came here, I believe, from San Francisco in the late 80s, early 90s and thrived right up here on Maple Hill for 
well over 20 years, during which time she really helped see this co-op through thick and thin. I remember a big crisis. Thank you. And the cheers to the co-op. <laughs> Happy 50th. In the to Randy. To Randy. Might as well drink again. <laughs> Happy 50th. In the mid-2000s, when the co-op was in crisis, she really rallied a lot of us to, to come in and uh, make sure the co-op got back on its feet, and it did. Thanks, Alexis. So three poems. <clears throat> The first is called Shadows Like Horses, and we all know how much Randy loved horses. And the horses described in this poem, I think, are just as fitting as descriptions of the horses in Randy's paintings. Down palisades of night, bunched or racing in death-seeking gallop, See the darkening cloud as their shadows break the starting gate. Hear the faint, small rumbling vibrations of charging hoofs. Single, arrogant, stallion shapes, piebald mares, tough as barbed wire. Shrieking hysterically, attempting abandon their phantasmal selves, break through into another reality. Next one is called The Phantom Deer of Inverness. And we can imagine it as maybe being about the phantom deer of Maple Hill. The Phantom Deer of Inverness, brushing shoulders or sliding alone, trackless, untraceable, leading one to wonder, do they even exist? Silently gliding farther than the edge of eyesight, the shadows of their shadows move beyond shades of being, presenting not themselves, but visions of themselves, white and ghostly, to only some few, and even then most rarely, no more to be accurately described than recognition of footprints fading on a smooth pond's surface. And there's Randy's drawing of the deer, the phantom deer. And then the last one is very short and has a whole two-page drawing of Randy's. It's called In Restless Sleep, and it's about these geese. Those birds, those birds that glide by night on farther shores than here, are resting on a cold black lake and soon will reappear. Thank you. So, hi everyone. As you see on the, on the back wall there, there are, there are works of Randy's. Um, and also, you will see on that screen, there's a, there's a film that I was working on with Randy, and it's about two and a half hours long. Um, and at least I, I had hoped that everyone would be able to hear Randy's voice tonight. But the, the volume is so low that, that you won't be able to hear anything um, in, the, in this room, I'm afraid. I, I, we, we, we couldn't come up with the technology that was strong enough to be able to actually, to actually give this to you. But I have released this movie as of last night. Uh, I, I, re I released it on my channel. It is now public. So if, if you uh, go to my channel um, at Orca, you'll, you'll be able to hear her words, um, um, in which uh, she actually talks in, in great depth uh, about, about her work and how she made it and why. Um, and um, uh, it, it becomes very intimate and very psychologically oriented. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to, uh, to give you some quotations from her, uh, because uh, as a political artist, 
as a deeply committed uh, person uh, to, to, to using her art for social benefit. Uh, she's, she's one of the great ones that we should always remember. Uh, uh, she was a student of George Gross and of Marshall Glazier. You might know George Gross as a person who was an expressionist painter uh, in the pre-Nazi period, and uh, in fact, he had to, he had to flee Germany uh, because he, he was about to be assassinated uh, by, the, by the forces, uh, uh, by the Nazi forces. Uh, but, uh, so, but interestingly enough, when he came to this country and he started making his paintings that were also uh, critical of things that were happening in this country, guess what? He was no longer supported. He had been, before he came to this country, uh, when he was against the rise of Hitler, he was very well supported. But when he came to New York uh, and began to make uh, criticism against the what we now call the one percent, um, he uh, he uh, he he was subtracted uh, from as much as possible from public view. He did become a teacher at the Art Students League, uh, and. Uh, Th that's how he supported himself while he was here. Um, and uh, his student and uh, a person that was very close to him, Marshall Glazier, was, uh, was a teacher of Randy. So Randy comes through this lineage of this very important lineage of people who were very using their art to be critical of, of the of, of, of the situations that are happening in the world. Uh, and as such, she could be considered to be a renunciate artist. Uh, she also did, uh, her work with horses was just absolutely extraordinary. Uh, there were times when, when she had a whole herd of horses that she had adopted who had been left behind. Uh, she, often, um, she often adopted uh, beautiful thoroughbred horses who had been ruined at the racetrack. Uh, and she took as her, uh, she took as her modus operandi uh, a, uh, a quotation that, she, that it is said that Picasso said, the horse is the body of the woman. What he meant was that the way that the horse is used and, and uh, commodified and uh, enslaved uh, as a means of transportation and in every other way is exactly the same way that women were being controlled and dominated. Uh, and that is why, for example, you can see uh, in, that, in that big print back there with the hands uh, that, uh, and, and the sun, uh, that's about, that's about the, the racetrack and the men who are betting on the horses and who are abusing those horses in that way. Um, so let me give you a couple of quotations from her. Um, uh, one is, my vision for my life is that I gallop over a rim that holds a deep and eternal mystery. And that came from her direct experience as uh, a steeplechase rider from her childhood, in which she's jumping over, over a fence, and she doesn't know how she's going to land. And so she, and she used that as a, as a metaphor for the way that she makes her art. Uh, uh, she, let's see. Um, she was, uh, yes, she was like, she became virtually a female Chiron, the body of the horse and the, and the, uh, with the head of a man, but in this case, the head of a woman. Um, and um, that meant that she was allowing the beauty of the horse as exploitable as the female 
human female simultaneously, passively, and actively, as a brilliant and lonely artist of singular self-generation, she transforms the ancient myth which rationalized the subjugation of both horse and woman throughout recorded history, that is, recorded patriarchal history, we should say. Um, and here, she's talking about her realization of her working in, in, in the 1950s, she said, the 1950s were the dead zone. I painted the void because of what I felt, not because of, of what I would have been able to articulate at that time. When I saw the plays of Beckett and Pinter, then I understood. Randy notes that we ourselves are vessels for the timeless spirit that can come through our work, that the need to purge ourselves of possible obstructions to that goal is the reason why we, why we create art. So of all three of them together, um, I was commenting uh, that uh, they, all, all three of these artists, uh, and, these, and these are notes from a book that I was trying to make with Randy that was about all three of the artists and their relationship to each other. Um, they are no stranger to existential despair. They are constantly exploring the effects of societal and self-destructive behavior on the psyche of the individual. They have the devoted themselves to the project of the creation of an awakened humanity a humanity that is able to interiorize the soul lacerating lessons of global self-destruction. Uh, and one of, uh, an example of Randy's work that has to do exactly with that uh, was uh, her, her painting about the atomic uh, bomb explosion of which Len uh, wrote a poem uh, and they worked together on that. I just wanted to uh, express how, how much Randy is with us in this room, how the, 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 the consistency of our feelings about Randy and our feelings about the world, not just now, but all, all the time, this beautiful collection of people who are in this room and who have been performing tonight, um, it, that uh, I, I just wanted to express that Randy, in spirit, is very much with us. And uh, I'm happy to be able to say that. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want you to go away. I can't stand up here alone, crying. <laughs> but, um, but we all, um, sort of more in the Quaker tradition, I think, um, we all probably have a really po powerful and inspirational memory of Randy. And it might, it might be a moment to share that. Um, it's just, she was a, she was a, it was, she was such an inspiration to all of us. We all had a connection to her, at least most of us, at some point. Um, you know, were touched by her and um, and her horses and her tag sales up here and her <laughs> her motivation to get this place back online after it was closed down by labor and industry. So she was my big inspiration. Um, I, I I just want to open up the circle to these people here. So yeah, and these close friends of Randy's and uh, I mean you probably say a lot, but we can all say a lot. She was a deep and powerful and amazing woman, an incredible artist. Her work is with us. Her spirit is with us. Her horses are with us. She rode me on draft horse through the woods when she knew I had been living in cabins on East Hill for seven years waiting to find land. And she rode me on horseback to Katua. So she found home for me and um, and inspired me to continue like 40 years later I'm still being with these beautiful giant beings and um, 
So I, I'm going to shut up and take this off. And we're going to spend a minute to just give some time for a memory of Randy. And then we do have some really incredible performers. Uh, if you want to stay for one more moment or two, E-Rock, Heidi, uh, <clears throat> we have a lineup. So please uh, share your thoughts and memories. Yes, we remember uh, Randy's in incredible generosity. It, it was always there. It was always in manifestation. And that, that is a great gift that uh, art gives to people, uh, at, which is, uh, for example, also so incarnate in Peter's work, uh, the work of Bread and Public all these years, uh, which is such an inspiration to all of us. All right, Iraq, take it away. Yes, one moment. Just say one brief moment. Do you want to move? Do you want to get Betsy's memory? Do you want to get Betsy's thing? A group of people are trying to form a, um, a, a community trust, and this is called, we have, we've got a name already, the Plainfield Area Community Trust, um, and our hope is that we could, this could be maybe the focus of our efforts, um, is, is, is conserving this building and keeping it an active and um, center for community engagement and community, um, re, you know, life. Um, and so keep, I'll keep you, uh, w hopefully you'll be hearing more about <laughs> that. You. But we are in the process it's of becoming. It's not a funeral right now. It's not a funeral. <laughs> uh, we'll be finding, um, we're trying to get nonprofit status at this point. So we'll be uh, hopefully talking more about how, to, how we can purchase this building then. And please sign the guest book. And um, thank you, Betsy, for that hopeful, um, hopeful moment. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to start off by saying thanks to Alexis and Jerome for pulling all this together and everyone else who helped out. Yeah. yeah. Woo! And uh, also the, the art show carrying back months really. We we put it up. One year. It's been up for the whole year. This is our 50th. This is our 50th anniversary group show that's going yeah. on for this year. And it's new artists all coming in. So, yeah. Thank you, Alexis Thank and, you. and Jerome. And I wrote this um, cute poem for the co-op that I want to share. It's called A Love Letter to the Plainfield Co-op. Dear Co-op. <laughs> I've been meaning to write you this letter for a while now. I mean, who's to say when it all started? Maybe it was yesterday when you poured me that free cup of coffee. Well, not sure if the morning coffee's still free, but you smiled and gave me it anyway. Or maybe it was a few years ago when you handed me some carrots and the last roll of toilet paper through the window, the groceries I'd ordered over the phone because COVID had made it hard for us to be close then. Or maybe it was years before that, when I was out back filling up my water jugs for the cabin I was staying in off the grid. Or no, maybe it was decades ago when we were planning that anti-nuke action upstairs and you helped me change my daughter's cloth diaper. Or perhaps it was in the early days when we were dividing up the buckets of honey pouring the sweet golden nectar into the reused spaghetti jars and scooping the last bits of the bucket with our fingers. Perhaps it was then I realized I love you. I realized I loved you then and realized now I've been loving you for half a century. Oh, co-op, I love your bulk bins and bravery. I love your celery and charm. I love your funky style, your disco produce. I love your network of small farms. Oh, co-op, I love your incense and beers, your tofu and ham. Oh, co-op, I love you, man. 
I love the creaking of your floorboards and upstairs piano chords. I love your newsletters, your wool sweaters, your vinegar and almonds. I love your kids area and renovations, your paint jobs. Oh, co-op, you heartthrob. Oh, co-op, I love your cheese and wines. I love your baked goods divine and all the funny conversations at the reg, the gossip train, the rumor mill. Oh, co-op, you're so drama-filled. I still love you, though. Oh, co-op, I love the community center above, too. I love the dance classes and art shows, the potlucks and movies. Oh, co-op, you're still so... You got it. Groovy. <laughs> I love the ways you've changed and still remain, and I love the meaning of your name. Cooperation. Because in these times of relentless violence and greed, cooperation is what we need. What we need. <laughs> and you've stood for that since the first time we met, since the first bag of oats and the bucket of honey we split up 50 ways. <laughs> Oh, co-op, I love you today and tonight and in the times ahead. Oh, co-op, thank you for bringing us together and keeping us fed. Long live the co-op till capitalism is dead. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need help with this birthday song. This song was passed through friends. If you ever find out who wrote it, let me know. It's a call and response song. It goes like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We're so glad you're alive. Gift from the earth. Bless the day of your birth. Happy birthday to you. We're so glad you're alive. You're a gift from the earth. Bless the day of your birth. Bend then rebound. Bend and rebound, gentle strength of the willow is found. I want to sing this really simple round with you. I'm just flabbergasted and so grateful for all the people who have fed the resilience that is the Plainfield Co-op and Community Center through all the decades, the bending and the rebounding and the bending and the rebounding. And uh, also want to shout out some thanks to Larry Gordon. I don't know if he was named already this evening. I came in a little bit late, but it's, Thank you. Yeah. it's the two-year anniversary of his death a couple of days ago, and he's been a big part of what has kept me in this area and all the music that he cultivated and his part in this uh, project as well. So shout out to you, Larry. <laughs> The town clerk's office on the back is a dedication to Larry Gordon. Mm -hmm. It's the singing tree that Peter did. So yeah. Probably can see it in the sort of dark. <laughs> do, do. Bend then rebound. Try that. Bend then rebound. Bend then rebound. Bend then rebound. turns around like this. Gentle strength of the willow is found in the bend and rebound. Bend and rebound. 
to the rebound. Woo! So, wow. Step right up. <clears throat> this is that moment when somebody that has been dying to say something but a little bit shy to say it might step forward and make Yes, please. I, I just need to ask you to stand a little bit near this microphone. I can hold this if it's just, it's helping record for. Thank you to Orca for being here, for recording this, for being our community, our amazing local community. And thank you, Jerome, for facilitating this uh, documentation. So I was just going to say that Randy could, at the same time that she's looking over the rim at the abyss, could also find humor in every situation. And as we looked over that rim, we would both be crying and laughing so hard. Uh, just an amazing force of nature. And also, I saw her cook a meal one time. And I thought, Oh my God, I should have had a hard hat here. <laughs> things are flying, like everything else you did in life was just full of energy and everything flying every which way, flower in the air and everything else. So uh, I just really miss her a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Jerome. <clears throat> We just, we raised some funds, and thank you to those people who made a little donation. But let's, um, let's warm up this puppy, since we got our tune today, Jerome. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, maybe you guys remember this amazing experience when we got this beautiful grand piano and called up East Montpelier Home Center and thought, you know, how much does it cost to move a pan piano? Way more than we have. So East Montpelier <laughs> Home Center, who is helping me out with Couture, opened up, we opened up this window, and their cherry picker picked up this piano from Vermont. Uh, the East Montpelier uh, uh, Lumber Store. Who donated this piano? Oh, it was Brain the, the music school, the uh, Mont uh, Monteverde Music School. Monteverde Music <laughs> School. The teachers didn't want it anymore because it didn't have such a great tone. Well, just you wait. It still doesn't really have. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm hesitating to play it, but uh, even though we had it, even though we had it tuned, um, yes. Thank you, Eric and Melody Hill. Uh, <clears throat> Um, music uh, 
tuning today. And it's just, oh yeah, so we swung it in the window with the cherry picker, believe it or not. That's how we got the piano up here. It was a great community event. It actually. was. There were like 50 people involved. It was great. Getting it in this window. <laughs> Sorry to shut the fuck up and listen to your own. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still uh, on the track of Randy here. I wanted to play something for Randy uh, that uh, the Nocien uh, by, by Sati. Uh, it means the, the dance of the female Gnostics, which is something that Randy would have really loved. Uh, so I'm just going to play one of them. There are three of them. Um, and they have, they, these pieces are amazing because they have no time signature. Uh, and Sati also, uh, instead of uh, giving the typical kinds of uh, dynamics, uh, uh, motion uh, uh, indications like uh, presto or largo or all of those Italian expressions that are usually used with music. Um, he used more psychological terms, uh, like for example, very brightly, play, play it very brightly, or question something, ask about it, or on the edge of an idea, or make your own demands, or little by little, or on the tip of the tongue. So forgive this piano and forgive me, because I haven't practiced this very much. But <laughs>
another, it's another artist who, it's, it's, it, he's very important because of the way that he broke through all the barriers, uh, all of the classical barriers. So, you know, it's, it's something that uh, speaks uh, to me and I think to all of us so deeply uh, involved in the art, artistic process and the process of art, you know, that to, the, to just um, to not allow ourselves to go into a space of predictability. <laughs> so, thanks. Thank you. You want a new proposition? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I heard the call for an improvisation. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm um, glad to see you here and have you with us. Thank you. Great. Thank you for everybody. And if anybody wants to buy a little bread and puppet item or take food with them or help clean up or whatever, uh, these square chairs go into that room. These folded chairs go into that room. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone.